and hello again and here we are back in my garage and I'm drinking tea as usual and today this is going to be quite a short video hopefully because I've had a few people ask me about the ins and outs of wiring up a bike from scratch and they've asked me things like what plies do you use what kind of sleeving do you use what kind of wiring do you use where do you buy it from that sort of thing so I thought I'd cover the basics in this short video now so we'll kick off by saying it helps an awful lot if you've got the right tools for the job. So I've actually got quite a lot of various things, but the one thing I use more than anything else when I'm wiring up a bike is this thing. And this is a tool for stripping off the outer plastic from a wire cable. So let me find some wire for you. Hang on. Yes, here's some wire here. And how it works is you put the wire in here like that, squeeze, and it clamps down on the wire and then forces it apart like that and you get a nice bit of exposed inner wire. You can adjust it so you can get a different length of exposed wire but usually that's fine by me. And you use that hundreds of times when you wind up a bike and it saves you a huge amount of time from trying to instead try and use a bit of a knife or something just to pull off the wire. This thing saves you a huge amount of time, always gives a good result, can't argue with that. Not expensive and uh, yeah, well worth it, well worth having. So once that's sorted out, the next thing you need to use is a pair of crimpers. I've actually got several different kinds for different sizes, but uh, this is kind of the size you'll find most of the time. They're about 10, 15 pounds. And you use these obviously for crimping on the connectors on the end of the wire. So these uh, connectors, these are bullet connectors, of course, you also get spade connectors. If you look at closely, I can't really zoom in close enough, but they'll have two pairs of little fingers or arms that you need to squeeze together to clamp the wire in place. And the shorter inner one is used to clamp the wire itself, nice and tight. And the outer one, which has slightly longer fingers, is used to clamp the outer plastic that goes around the wire. So it's really important to get that right and to have the correct appropriate plies for that, the crimpers. These crimpers have got different sizes so you can use it for different connectors and yeah it's pretty straightforward but as I say it's well worth doing, well worth having the correct crimper. What I don't recommend you have, let me just uh, move this out of the way, a big, a big no if you like, is these kind of covered so-called insulated terminal terminals here because well they're crap, I mean I'm sure you've all seen them, all these things, the blue and red typically, and they come complete with these hard plastic covers, um, and quite frankly, they're awful. And the reason they're awful is because they're quite fat, they use a lot of room, when you've clamped them nice and tight, they tend to fall off a lot because you're not sure, you know, if you've got the correct uh, pressure on there, the plastic collapses, you're not sure what's going on, and in fact they're not even that well insulated because water can get in there so I don't recommend you use these. The one thing I do with them though is um, if you've got things like these little circular hooped connectors I pull off the blue covering and then add my own covering and use it as a bare kind of connector. That's the only thing I use this for. I've used it before in the past and they're awful so don't use them. Don't use them at all. Anyway what I do recommend you use are this sort of connector here. Now these come complete with their own soft rubberized or plasticky covers. I'll have to zoom in a bit I think so you can see but they're nice and soft. They're much more like a sort of OE factory cover so what you do is you clamp on your appropriate connector on the end of your wire. Before you do that you slide one of these on and then slide back and it covers it nice and safe, it's sort of clear, translucent, you can see what's going on and since it's a very soft outer cover you can have it against your frame, against the powder coat your frame and it doesn't chip it, it doesn't wear it away in you so I do love these things and it's actually what I use most on the bike. You also get of course bullet connectors too, you get little bullet connectors, now, these are brass but you can also get, let's see, nickel plated ones, I'm not sure they're plated but they're silver finished anyway, here we go and I've actually got a box of these things because you do get through a lot of them. So yeah, I don't think you can see that very well, but um, that's what I use most of the time. Now, when it comes to connectors in general, 
I have moved away from using multi-pin connectors. These are the ones you get on OE factory bikes, the big white blocks where you get six or seven wires all going in the same connector. I do use them when I have to, but the reason why I don't like them on my bikes is because of packaging. And by that I mean the blocks are quite big, quite unwieldy, and also they're hard. Those plastic blocks are quite hard. If you just zip tie it close to your frame, close to some bodywork, in use it will wear down your paintwork in no time. And it makes it quite difficult to find a way of using them uh, without that happening. Because on a bike like mine, you don't have all the special um, brackets to hold the connectors in place so you don't rattle around. So I find that uh, using these multi pin connectors isn't ideal. I've also found the same problem with some of the kinds which are guaranteed waterproof sealed and you think oh they're perfect for a bike and in fact they are but they're also quite bulky quite difficult to wire up so I kind of went away from using that and I've gone back to using these rather simple bullet connectors and spade connectors but only these kind with the rather lovely soft plastic well mostly plastic but they're rubbery covers and that kind of mimics the style of connector you would find on a 70s or 80s bike and that's why I like them. I also like them because they're much easier to package on the bike. So I'm going to move the camera now and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And so looking at the bike, I've got one multi-pin connector so far in the wiring and it's here. I had to use that because it's part of the rectifier. It's got six wires going through it, six. Meanwhile here, squeezed underneath the frame rails, I've got many, many wires and some of those are from the instrument pod and that's got about 11 wires all together so can you imagine having two of those big multi-pin connectors trying to squeeze it here it just doesn't fit it just won't work so using these small bullet connectors which are surrounded by a soft outer cover works fine and in fact it mimics the style used as i say on bikes from this era and finally when it comes to these terminals you want to finish off with some heat shrink which i've used here and so when it comes to heat shrink, it seems like you've got two choices. You can either buy this stuff, which is a long tube, and just get some scissors and cut off the appropriate amount and away you go, that's fine. Or you can buy some pre-cut versions here in a box like this. And in this box, you get all different sizes. Let me get it open. See there, you get from very small to very big. It's about the biggest you can get. And uh, yeah, you just cut it down to what you want and away you go. So that done then, the one more thing you need is one of these things, a source of heat. I just use a lighter, works really well. So that's that, all pretty simple stuff. So moving on then. And next, let's talk about so-called cable management. In this case, we're talking about the sleeving that I use on the bike to cover up all the wiring and keep things bundled nice and neat. And as you see here, I use this woven nylon sleeving and that's what we'll talk about next yes the so-called cable management now i prefer to use this stuff which is kind of like a, a woven nylon tube which expands so you can see here it just expands like a big sort of snake or something it expands to suit what you bang in it so you get all different sizes again that's about whatever size that is a lot narrower a lot wider and so on now the one problem i found with it is that at each cut end it does tend to fray a little bit I'm not sure you can see that it frays so to get around that i always use a heat shrink a slide on first before i start adding all the connectors and so on then when you finish slide it back up again on this edge heat it up and it seals it nice and neat so yeah obviously there are other methods of doing it you can buy uh, wiring tape a bit like used on original only factory wiring looms which by the way is not, is definitely not insulation tape. Don't use that stuff, it doesn't work very well. When it comes undone eventually, it's all sticky and it leaves the right mess behind, so don't use that. Yeah, so that's that. Another thing when it comes to kill management is holding it all in the correct place. And for that you need a P-clip. And I tend to use these. These are aluminium P-clips with a, a rubber kind of centre to them. Keeps things nice and soft something like that find a whole e-frame clamp it up and the wiring's nice and neat and they come in all different sizes you know small to big again 
not too expensive, about five, ten pounds, something like that, so well worth having. I've also found somewhere, let me dig it out, it's down here somewhere. Yeah, an even cheaper option is to use these uh, purely nylon plastic P clips, and they're a lot smaller. I'm not sure you can see that, a lot smaller, a lot simpler. And the one thing I found, one use for these is holding on the, uh, is on your lines, your brake lines, clutch lines, that sort of thing. You don't want a big bulky P clip like this on it, but this is much neater, completely waterproof, doesn't go rusty, and it's quite soft. So yeah, I like these things. Again, quite cheap, a few pounds for a big bag of them. So nothing to worry about there. And so now moving on to the testing of the circuits you're building. The key thing you need is one of these things, and this is a multimeter. Now back in the day I had one of these things that was a sort of analog system it was quite tricky to use but these modern ones are digital makes it much much easier and the price has come down such a lot I was amazed how cheap this was about 15 pounds for a, a digital multimeter I mean back, back in the day 30 years ago this thing would have been thousands of pounds but anyway no need to get too uh, worried about it it's quite a simple thing really it measures things like voltage um, ampage and of course resistance as well and it will measure both AC and DC current. But I must say, the one thing I use this for more than anything else is testing for resistance. And what you're basically doing is testing to see whether, I mean, that's now says, oh, well, it's like an open circuit. There is no resistance because it's just infinite. But if you now put these things together, let's see, hang on, <laughs> I can't really do it very easily. I'm not sure the camera will show it, but if I put these things together, these two little probes, this is positive and negative, of course, then resistance goes down to zero because there's no resistance and basically that's the thing I use most of all just checking to see I've got a complete circuit I've not got a duff connection somewhere which isn't connecting properly yeah so I find that really helpful it's also helpful for checking for earths so you might think oh yeah I've got a good earth there it's earth from there back to the battery and you check it, it turns out it's not there's no circuit so you're not being earth so I find that very helpful now these things come with very complicated and very long instruction manuals but to be honest yeah you can get into it if you want but um, for what I use it for you know you can also check things like voltage see how active your battery is see what voltage is putting out that sort of thing and that's a really good way of checking to see if your battery is duff or not so this is invaluable it really is for 20 pounds you know you're daft not not to buy one and finally there's one more thing I found very helpful and I wish I bought it years ago but I just bought one quite recently and that is a small separate 12 volt battery not the main battery for the bike just a small 12 volt battery a little small amount of ampage found it really helpful because i can use that to test things like the indicators the lights brake lights horn that sort of thing without worrying about the main battery being all installed correctly just get two wires check it out beep beep your horn works that's great check it out again yes your indicator's lighting up yes your main beams on that sort of thing it's invaluable and I use that as a sort of pre-check before I start plugging in things like the M unit and that sort of thing because it just means you're cutting out a possible error before you get to that point so yeah I find having a separate little 20 pound 12 volt battery invaluable I would just wish I just wish I bought one years ago and in fact what I'm going to do my guzzy next the wiring needs to be finished off for that again I find it invaluable so yeah that's kind of all the different things that I use at the moment uh, I'm sure I've forgotten lots of things but um, I'll put up some some um, links in the description of where I buy these things from mostly Amazon because I'm on Amazon Prime and it's cheaper to get it that way but also of course vehicle wiring products which are a great company UK company and they've got everything you could ever want yes that's about it really I'm sure I've forgotten lots of things so if you've got a question put it in the comments and I'll try and answer it best way I can but now that's my uh, tea break over, so I better get back on my uh, bike here and carry on with the wiring. So anyway, thanks for watching and cheers.